everybody, and welcome to the Afternoon Tune. I'm your host, Josh, and I'm doing a special interview with author, writer here, Devin Howell. How's it going there, Delvin? Oh, cool, man. How's it going to your site? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Um, so, uh, Delvin, uh, I know him. He has a comic called Offset. Uh, we're part of like the same kind of, I guess, Facebook community, as you would say. We're kind of a part of that. And that's how I met him. And then, you know, uh, he had a, told me he had a comic coming out. He posted it on social media. And I was like, that's really cool. Uh, I ended up picking up me a copy um, of it. And let me just show your comic on stream right here. Um, just so everybody can have a reference for what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to pull out my PDF. Um, right here um, on stream right now is Offset the comic. Very nice. I like the art, uh, artwork a lot um, of the comic. Very well done. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit um, of the artwork and um, kind of the person responsible and kind of how you got in touch with them? Yeah, uh, so the comics artwork is done by my good friend and partner, uh, business partner Tristan Roach. Um, he goes by Art of the Cub on social media but um he is part of the uh group of comic enthusiasts who decided to band together and pool resources in order to uh, create Car caribbean comics so that group is called beyond publishing caribbean okay. um so i met him through there and we kind of just hit it off um originally and once when offset was was a one shot right it was a one shot comic he was actually subbing for the original artists. And, you know, I decided to give him a shot. His art style was very interesting. It was a, very different from the original um, first version of the book. But when I saw it, I was like, this is cool. And he was working on his own comic book for his um, school project. And when I saw his art style exponentially improve, I was like, yo, okay, cool. We gotta, we gotta talk some more. And he definitely was excited to give Offset another shot uh, with his new art style and you know he decided to work from on the book from issue one and he's been part of the series ever since uh i consider him my art director a lot of the changes are the concept art that i have for a lot of characters some that hasn't even um like when it, when illustrations that are now being made for them i run them past him first because he has a eye and a vision for the book visually that i i don't even have so i kind of trust him a lot but yeah, you can check him out on um, social media on the art of the cub, and you should be seeing some work from him very soon. Yeah. Okay, so I have your comic pulled right here on stream, showing up uh, the panels, the artwork. Um, so with the artwork, so did you give him any guidance in terms of kind of what you were looking for, the style, or did you just kind of say like, hey, yeah, this is kind of the the, the genre of the comic, and they he kind of went from there? How did that kind of work? Well, um, so. I kind of, so I'm a big action enthusiast, yeah? Um, so I kind of have a specific look for the book, especially when I, when I decided to, when I figured out what I was doing, I decided to take more control over um, the comic. And I tend to draw stick men. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. It sounds very, it sounds kind of, it sounds kind of crazy, right? But I, I, I tend to do storyboards with stick men. Because I can't really draw to save my life, but I use, I use stick man to chart out each page, and basically I give him that with as many detailed references and and things to basically like in terms of angles, in terms of characters, in terms of impact, you know, examples of what I, I want. I go in very big detail about that with every uh, panel, and basically he gives me a sketch. I, and from there, he just adds more details. The book was a big, um, not necessarily in terms of what we wanted the book to look like, but we, we kind of, we knew we wanted it to be in color, but we wanted to do something that was not only unique, but also economical. Um, I think at the time he put me on to Prince of Cats, I think, um, what's his name, Ronald Wimbley? He's the guy who illustrated that book. And uh, he showed me a page from that comic. I was like, yeah, I want the color style to look like that. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And it, I don't know if you realize it has like a little flat, like it uses flats, but it's kind of stylized and like a lot of purples and mm. and uh, reds in the first in the first issue. And then um, in issue two, when we 
we, we got another um, artist on board, Edward Bola, and he added a cell shaded style, which we kind of built off of, and it went really well with Tristan's artwork, right? And from there, we decided to push that and kind of like combine the stuff from issue one with the stuff for issue two and three. And I think um, with issue four, and this is shortly after Into the Spider Verse came out, so we wanted to go kind of buck well in terms of the visuals. So he decided to like push even more in terms of how the book looks um in terms of the colors and, and the combinations and to make it more eye-catching so that's kind of like our journey from for how the book looks visually uh, in terms of action scenes like i told you before i'm a big fan of action so mm. i'm the sort of guy that i'm highly influenced from martial arts films um you know i love the raid i love um I didn't say from HK Cinema, um, Donnie Yen, Jet Li, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And I'm highly influenced by um, Baha Manga, action manga as well. Um, Veritas, Shen and Gil Anshi, Tenjo Tenge, um, those sort of books. Uh, Euphor Strode, Invincible, that sort. So basically, I try to, you know, when I do my manuscripts, I tend to get inspiration from those guys and tailor it for my character and my art styles to give him like an idea of what I want the book to look like, you know, when it comes to action and um, exposition. So that's kind of my process right there. Okay. Um, so you said that, so when you kind of do the whole kind of storyboards with the stick figures, that you give them tons of references to go along with it. And as you mentioned, so you said Hong Kong cinema, very much, you know, kind of big martial arts movies, um, things like that, you know, as far as being a reference. Um, as far as like the, the design of the characters and kind of the, the way they look, because um, if I had to kind of just take a guess a little bit here, because you look at some of the characters and how they look, it very much looks like um like from a an animated series that you would kind of see maybe maybe kind of like early 2000s mid 2000s maybe something like static shock type era of animation there um so it's kind of was that kind of like your general kind of inspiration for the way the characters kind of looked um in the in the comic well um uh, it's in what tristan is he has a background in animation okay um so he he, he actually um animation studio called bounce house so it was kind of like a, a match made in heaven because I, I i always had uh a, a anime i was always an like anime inspired manga inspired dude mm. and at the time it also was was created and we came up with the um with the that's the spark of the idea of it naruto was pretty big right mm. um so i wanted characters that looks because I'm, I'm big on urban fantasy uh, also it's an urban fantasy story first and foremost so it is based on how present day barbados is or was at the time it was created hmm. but it has like a layer of fantasy and fantastical events beneath the island so a lot of the character designs are based on real people that you would see every day but i just decided to add a twist to them so for example like Kyle is like an everyday normal teenager but he walks around with a, piece of, with a piece of sugar cane, which is, you know, it's seemingly very odd. And I wanted it to be kind of simple because um, simple yet iconic is the best way I could, I could describe Kyle's design. I wanted him to to be easily cosplayed, believe it or not. But I still wanted to be something that his silhouette would be kind of you know, like easy to stand out. So mm. like very much the whole Luffy is in one piece with the straw hat and um, how you have uh, Goku's hair. I wanted Kyle's sugar cane and his polo shirt to be to have that sort of vibe as well. Um, and that, the same goes for Collins and um, Sniper with the bottle case on his back. I just wanted it to have uh, simplicity, but also to stand out in its in its you know, comic marketplace and the genre. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just we've been talking a lot about the design, the look of it. So you want to explain, so your comic, what it's all about, the premise, um, location, um, everything like that. Just describe, you know, to the audience, like what your comic is kind of all about and, and everything like that. Sure. Um, Offset is an urban fantasy comic that follows um, Carl Harding, who is a young state licker, and he discovers an underground obia trade in the Caribbean island of Bimshire. Uh, Bimshire is like a fictional version of, uh, of Barbados. Yeah. Okay. From a young age, Kel saw Bimshire as a frightening place. Uh, bus stops glow, 
flute music haunts the air and the shadows themselves stalk him. But if his mother dead and a baby mother to raise, sorry, a baby, a baby brother to raise, he always, always found um, Bim Shara to, he found it hard to grow up in that particular environment. And things come to a head when a serial killer knocks on his door and comes to claim his life. And he is dragged down a bloody path where he discovers the secrets surrounding the Harding family and the, the horrible depths, the massive depths, sorry, that his mother left behind. Um, with regards to the Obia trade, basically the way it operates, miracles are traded for a fee. So you can basically get anything you want, but the catch is each one comes with a burden from debt and it differs in many forms. And you're going to see how that basically affects not only color, but many characters within the course of the story. Um, in terms of genre, it is, a, like I mentioned before, it's an urban fantasy story mm. that takes place in the, Car in the Caribbean. So I think um, it is, it's kind of like the wire or the raid meets Harry Potter. Okay. Right? But set in, in in Caribbean setting with Caribbean folklore. That's the best way to describe it. So it, it, it combines elements of urban fantasy, um, shonen action manga, um, crime drama, as I previously mentioned, and martial arts. But the Caribbean twist. It uses um, Caribbean folklore and uh, basically Caribbean magic systems and, and settings and whatnot. So that's, that's the, the gist of it. Okay. If you're a fan of like things like um like I mentioned before, Shonen Baha Manga, like a big influence to me when it first started out was things that were like sword based, kinda of like um Rooney Kenshin, mm -hmm. um Samurai Shampoo, those sort of things, the weapon based stories, um Blade of the Immortal, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. It's based on those but as it evolves as it goes into like territory similar to Naruto or um, um, like Tenjo Tengu, those Soul Eater, those are those are the stories. So, um, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Okay. Uh, I'm highly influenced by um, by a lot of novels as well, um, particularly like, like I mentioned the Harry Potter series, but also influenced by things like um, Nightwatch and Vampire Hunter D, those sort of things. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I had a conversation with another writer. Um, he had a comic out called Decay. His name is uh, Anthony Stokes. Um, and in his comic, it also includes uh, magic and things like that, including his story set in New Orleans. Um, and I was just kind of curious, like you, you know, said you bring in a lot of this folklore aspect of the, uh, this area of, you know, Barbados and then, you know, kind of elements of that culture there. Um, I was just kind of wondering, did you ever kind of worry about, because I know sometimes with a lot of magic, folklore, mysticism type stuff, it gets kind of like demonized in a way in media and different things like that, because that's what we kind of talked about in my interview with Anthony Stokes, of saying like stuff like voodoo, for instance, has such a, a bad rap and things that people just see that as just such this evil, negative thing. Did you ever kind of, you know, have come across kind of those issues when you wrote kind of the folk folklore into the story of Offset? Um, well, originally I just saw it as a, as a unique magic system, yeah? I just wanted something that I can use that isn't like key or traditional magic or whatnot. So I said to go with, um, with Obia. Uh, hold on. Uh, to what the lore is and, and what the actual, oh, sorry. Oh, no, it just seemed like you just froze there for a second. Can you just repeat your sentence? I think you just froze there for a second. Okay, uh, from the beginning or should I... Yeah, from, from the beginning, yeah. Well, I, I was saying that... Yeah, I was saying that originally, um, I just... I, I wanted a unique magic system that wasn't like... Um, it wasn't like chakra or like key or anything like that. Because um, that was pretty big at the time when it came over offset. I wanted to do something totally different from that. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go with phobia, particularly because it was taboo and it was so unexplored. Like you don't really see, as like you mentioned before, ways that are demonized, right? And because it's so unexplored, I think there is more opportunity um, image. 
so a lot of the things that happen there are played upon what actually like is the actual folklore but obviously it's my own spin mm-hmm. so i i took the opportunity to because in the story i refer to it as the dark arcs um a dark a-r-c-s dark arcs that's the name of the actual trade but i do say that it is basically obi juju voodoo that sort of stuff it's just that that's what they call it in the professional circles as far as um in terms of like if it's demonized as a religion um it's just a matter of perspective um in the story of offset some people may consider it to be you know something evil something dark something sinister others may call it to be something wondrous hmm. you know what i mean something to build like so i think the direction that these that offset goes is not black and white per se it just is you know what i mean right yeah it's just a you know just a tool you use to tell the story and then it could be used for good or evil or you know kind of like that so it's just yeah right. there um so it kind of you know kind of in the story like you said it bringing so much of kind of culture into it and aspects of that um especially like how much represented do you think you know kind of your culture is represented in media and as far as how much you put that into this book of offset you know with the comic um like how much do you th- you know do you take into account there of putting like kind of your culture into this piece of media and and as opposed to what is out there already for you well um Basically, I had a lot of stories at the time. We still have a lot of stories in my head that uh, I want to release and I'm actually working on. But I put most of my mental real estate and my resources into Offset because, you know, in the event that I only have one shot at, at doing this, I want to do it with something that I'm familiar with and something that, you know, I basically experience. Like, I live in Barbados, so... A lot of the setting and a lot of the inspirations are literally right outside. There's stuff that I've experienced in life and stuff that I, I get inspired by every day. Especially now that you know the pandemic hit and traveling is not the easiest thing to do. Mm. Is is you know it was the right decision. But in terms of being represented in media, I I do I do find that the Caribbean. When you hear about the Caribbean, you, you always have this certain image, right? Sun, sea, sand, relaxation. Mm peak you know what i mean glamorous vacations expensive hotels jet skiing and that's the image that comes comes to me whenever you hear about the caribbean right and then maybe reggae and bob marley and that sort of stuff mm. and that's cool i don't mind that but we're so much more than that i think there's a beauty and also a, a, a bit of danger here i think we're underrepresented when it comes to horror i think we're underrepresented when it comes to 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 crying and and don't get me wrong, a lot of this stuff exists, like it happens. People that live here, we see the side that the tourists don't see, right? Yes, we do appreciate it. it's a beautiful place, it's paradise, but there's also a bit of like, you know, um, purgatory here, right? It's always, some things are a bit run down, just not as pretty as you would like to for to, to, to foreigners. And the people that live here kind of experience that. So uh, one of my goals is that I want to not necessarily shit on where I live, because that's, you know, that I know that sounds like that on first impression, but I just want to show the Caribbean as a whole of what it is, but at the same token, twist it using elements of fantasy, right? Using elements that you don't really see in this genre. Um, okay. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the genre. I've studied it most of my life um, in terms of like, not just as a fan, uh, as an audience member and a person who's like, yeah, I love these shows and I love these series and I love these books. But I, I'm the sort of person that I like the tropes, but I want to like twist them to something that's fresh and unique, but also familiar. And I think that Offset uh, gives me the opportunity, to, the opportunity to do that with Caribbean uh, folklore, and uh, that's the reason I chose it. Even a lot of the fight scenes I have, um, if you look at Stick Licking, like it's something that, like. You don't really see that in a fight scene at all. You see things that are similar to it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like Krav Maga, Salat, you know, those sort of fight, fight scenes you can see, you know, characters using sticks. But it's it's not quite what we would call stick licking in our culture. And I think that, you know, just using that as an example, I just wanted to, to, to have that uh, as a set piece. You know what I mean? I think about that a lot when it comes to set pieces and basically how I can 
comic could see something that I, f- I find is cool, tailor it to to where I live with characters that I know, with characters that that you don't necessarily see. That's kind of like what my my MO is. So that's basically my thought process. Okay. Um, you want to take us kind of the process of kind of getting your comic, you know, out there, getting it on, you know, all these different platforms where people can get it. Um, the feeling of when your comic was actually you were finished with it and then you actually released it. You want to just take us kind of through that process? Yeah. Um, so originally when we started doing um, comics, we did it for um, a local anime convention called um, Anime Con, right? So that was mostly where we were operating. Most of our fans used to attend this convention. And uh, basically we kind of made it, uh, you know, give them access to it. Uh, since then we, we've kind of made it accessible to local bookstores, uh, which has been kind of kind of hard to do. Because as you, you know, as I mentioned before, I live in Barbados and there isn't really much of a publishing industry here. Um, and in terms of like comic book creation, you know, it's not done in Ireland. It's done, you know, we, we do it overseas and import it back here, right? So it's something that's been a bit difficult to deal with because of like shipping fees, local import duties, that sort of stuff has made it kind of hard. And I myself, I I definitely was trying to move towards the more digital um, realm, like the more web comic vibe, but I. You know, and that's something that I've, I've not ruled out future, but I do, you know, I, I did feel kind of happy to see people like holding the comment in their hands. People down here specifically aren't really, they're not really into, I would say they're not into web comments, but in terms of consuming something, they they, they don't believe it's real and stick a hold it. I know it sounds really backward, but <laughs> that's kind of like how it is. Like, we, we, it, there are comic book fans here and there are manga fans here, of course, and they read stuff on- online. But when it comes to local books, unless they can hold it in their hands, that's when and they actually think that, okay, this is something to support. As weird as that sounds, right? There are myriad of comic creators here uh, in Barbados and um, some of them, you know, operate solely digitally and they're, they're virtually unknown here. And, you know, even though they're quite good and they build their audience outside. So, you know, that was kind of the thought process to get it printed. Um, now that it's printed right now, especially in the volume, I'm very happy with the, the way that it came out. I like the package. And I think that I am going to continue doing, because we did single, single issues initially, which you know, I, was, I had mixed feelings about. I like the, the product that we were pushing. I like the way, the quality of the book. I like seeing people have access to the story. By the same token, I, I'm not a big fan personally of 20 issue comic books. I like to have like something thicker. So it was kind of like, I know people were impatient, but I, f- I felt better giving them an entire volume. Because if you're a new person, I can give you a volume to read and you can get like, you know, a, a big chunk of story one time instead of having to like go and search for other issues. Like, I, I, I personally don't really like that in comics and I, didn't, I don't like, you know, subjecting new audience or new readers to that sort of thing. So. That's literally been the hardest thing. But in terms of like how I felt in terms in, get, in getting content created, uh, like I mentioned before, it was a what I mentioned before it is it's a book version, as you know, the the novel. Mm-hmm. Novel came first, right? Um, I I basically wrote that out of impatience because at the time, a lot of the main artists, especially Tristan, they were still in school, so wait until they you know I finished college, like okay, now we're free to do this. But I kind of got impatient, so I was like, well, I'm just going to write a manuscript. And in doing that, I became a big fan of prose. Um, I, you know, I deep dive into it. I found out what makes prose good and what makes um, what makes prose good, what advantages prose have, and basically went really deep into book design. So that's how I ended up with the part that I have for that. But I do love seeing my characters illustrated like i like to work with artists generally so mm-hmm. whenever i see like a scene that i've always had in my head and it's like come to life via illustration i always get super pumped and excited like every time somebody gives me a page or a new piece of artwork i'm like yo i'm floored every time and 
it just gives me genuine genuine excitement or even when a reader like tells me like you know give me their reaction to an event and the story tells me who their favorite character is any any small thing like that that keeps me going uh, it's kind of euphoric I, I can't really um i can't really replace anything um that makes me happier to be quite honest so hmm. that's just how the journey has been yeah. how long did you work on it uh before it was published uh, let me see. The manuscript. The manuscript was. I finished. I wrote that in two thousand and nine. For the book, um, answer the call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on a second. Um, kind of just breaking up there a little bit. Um, could you go back? there at all hello uh, hello no can you hear me yeah you're just kind of breaking up there a little bit you kind of froze again could you go back to you said 2009 could you oh, go back sorry. i was saying that um i wrote the the comic initially in 2008 sorry not the comic the book manuscript in 2008 2009 I submitted it to a local uh, literary competition, which I won in my category in 2010. Oh, nice. And around that time, a lot of my guys that I work with in comics, they were now decided to, they, they, they now got free time. So I basically decided to, to get it, um, what is the word? Not converted, but get it adapted into a comic book because a lot of guys were, had, were finally free. But at the same token, I worked on the manuscript, got it cleaned up, and decided to to pull the trigger to get it published, um, I think, around 2016. But during that time, I wrote like a second manuscript. So book two is already done, and edited and whatnot. I just put it on illustrators. But uh, I managed to finally get the book illustrated, or the novel illustrated in 2019. And the comics, the first issue was, the one shot was, issued in was done in 20, 2010 so the one shot was done in 2010 the first issue was done in 2013 and then we basically finished um issue two three and four like around like 20 2018 2019 hmm. okay so that's yeah that's pretty good uh, do so you have, that's basically the timeline uh do you have like a physical copy nearby you right there that you can show off uh yeah yeah so uh this is the comic right, this is the physical comic so uh full volume let me see if we could this yeah this mm-hmm. page uh it's here yeah and very the, nice um, yeah very nice how it looks better because i was showing like the digital uh, copy that she sent me, yeah, very much, yeah, in hand, very looks very, very much better, yeah. The panels look, yeah, much oh. richer and everything like that, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of like um, the quality of the book. Um, like, like I mentioned before, you can see the progression. So like, like I don't know if you can notice the the this is the coloring style for like issue one. It has like a lot of gradients. It's kind of flat but still like stylish. Mm. And like. In issue four now, like it looks like it's more like more detail, especially when it gets to like okay, you know, club scenes and, and whatnot. It gets more, um, yeah. more stylized. Yeah, I think I could pull up me. like uh, like the volume four kind of a little bit deeper into like the digital file that you sent, like in comparison to like the first yeah. issue. Yeah, I can see, like, you can see the different kind of comparison. Yeah, texture, characters look more defined, look more richer, kind of. Yeah, yeah so you can see, yeah. you, can, you can kind of see the difference in a lot of these later panels that I'm putting up on the stream right now. Um, yeah. yeah, you can see, you can see the difference. Yeah, that's really nice. I think that's pretty, that's pretty nice. It's, it looks really good. Yeah. Uh, stuff there. It's not, it's not as more to fight. Mm, yeah, uh, very, very good work. Um, so, so how many uh, volumes of it is? You said it's a, how many issues, you said? So, it, this has four issues in it. So, issue one to four is in this volume. Okay. Um, 
So it's like a like 130 pages, I think. Okay. And in terms of like, so this is an adaptation of the novel, right? So this this actually has this goes under chapter three, the novel. Uh, this is a novel here. Sorry, I didn't really talk about it much, but this is uh, illustrated by Hans Steinbeck. Mm-hmm. So not only did he do the covers, the, the front and back cover, but he also um, the illustrations inside. So it's basically like a late novel. Um, so it has the illustrations inside. Like this one. But then mm-hmm. it black and white. So it has like a a different aesthetic, but I kind of like it. it kind of it, it definitely reminds me of um I don't know if you ever saw the Afro Samurai comic, but okay. Like, I've uh, I've only ever seen the anime. I've never seen. I've never read the comic myself. But I've only ever yeah, seen it has like a, like a like or if you saw like the um the pilot the pilot um short that was done for the series before it got picked up. Mm. They kind of, kind of like it was kind of inspired. By that. Okay. Uh, but it has the illustrations for it. So basically, uh, the comic that's out so far goes up to chapter three in the book. Right, so basically, like to here, so this is like chat tree here. So there's still like a whole whole lot of story to adapt. I plan to do an actual adaptation of the of the book, even though it's moving a bit slow. Um, it is gonna be fully adapted. Um, for a second. Hmm. Let's just show you an example of of what I mean. So basically, this scene here in the book is. This scene here in the comments. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that. Uh, I think yeah, that comes across pretty nicely on video there. Yeah, I think so. So um, yeah, it's basically this much story. <laughs> and you still got this much to go. Um, I am working on volume two right now okay. of the comic, which is gonna cover um, next arc. Cause the first volume just introduces the main characters of the story. So mostly Kyle. Uh, Kyle Harding, who's a stick licker, Damien Collins, who, uh, you know, he, he's basically the guy who fights with a sword. Um, you call him a cane cutter in this. And Sniper, who's a dude that has the bottle case on his back and the, um, the bandana. So it introduces those three characters and what they can do and their dynamic. And then the next arc is basically, which is chapter four, is going to go into the, the next uh, major encounter where he uh, basically has to confront the Hartman. Uh, he basically gets on the Hartman's radar. And I'm not too sure if you're familiar with who the Hartman is. He's basically the Caribbean version of the Boogeyman, right? Everybody to do these childhood stories based on this dude, like don't stray too far from home or the Hartman will get you and all that. So basically in Offset, he is a serial killer and he basically has Carl Harden as his next target. And, you know, the outcome of that confrontation is what literally spearheads um, Kyle to go even deeper into this OB trade and I find out why he's being targeted and, and why his family is connected to this to this uh, particular trade. So, yeah. Mm. It's fun stuff and it goes even further than that going forward. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so how long do you think you'll plan on continuing working on Offset and, you know, kind of all the kind of volumes and continuations of the story and everything like that? Uh, right now, I'm working on so I get to go book two as any novel. Uh, number two is already done. It's already um, edited and and written. I just have to get it illustrated. I'm currently getting um, Hans is currently working on doing some illustrations for that, and we're kind of at the fifty percent mark with that. Right. Um, I'm also currently working on book three, which is manuscript number three. And uh, that's gonna have a chunk of story as well. Um, this character, this character is a bit further. Uh, my goal, I want to adapt um, the novels into a comic, right? Because basically, I, I try to work on work and control, and I think comics are, are doable. They're hard, you know, expensive, but in terms of the resources they have, they're very doable. I don't have to go through as much red tape to get them done. I can still present a cinematic experience that's very close to what I had in mind with a comic book. You know, I'm speaking from a guy who was never a fan of comics. Like, shockingly enough, I was not a fan of comics. But um, after, um, you're probably familiar with Bahar Royale, the, the, the movie, yep. right? 
the comic, the, the manga version for that was the first comic I've ever read to completion. I've read all the issues, read that in two days, completely changed my mind in terms of what a comic could do in terms of a story. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, as a, as a person who's not a fan of comics, to basically be, you know, doing a, a, a whole 180 on what they can do, I decided to use them as a medium to get the story across. So my aim uh, right now is, is to basically work on adapting the novels into comic books while also continuing the novels, right? Uh, the people who read the novels are going to have a huge head start because comics do take time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to create, or it's already created kind of a, a Game of Thrones phenomenon where a lot of people who read the books and they're like, yeah, we kind of know what can happen next week. So you people who read the comics are like way behind. Um, and I tend to, ex- I, I, that lead is going to be extended as time goes on because, you know, if I'm maybe, you know, pandemic with starting, issue two will be, sorry, book two will be done and all already, but that's a hiccup to that. But we're still moving steadily on. I'm still, like, I have a bunch of comic manuscripts for book one already done. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of when people get free time that I can then, you know, even uh, work on that to, to get that to be illustrated again. So that's basically the timeline I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I also I'm looking to to you know get the merchandise and and, and get out to people. So I started dropping a lot of I'm going to start dropping a lot of characters um, to, on social media. That they've they've appeared in the books, but I haven't appeared in the comic as yet. So I think I'm just going to use that as an opportunity to just like bring them to life, show them what people show the people what they look like, and put a face to them. So that's basically the next step for me as well. I've already gotten a couple um, characters dropped. Uh, wait, wait, in the vault to drop, I should say. So, you know, look forward to that very soon. Okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of, like, the demographic for Offset, I mean, who do you think it's, you know, like, who are you kind of primarily writing it for? Is it kind of teenager, primarily um, 20-something on up? Um, like, is it, I mean, because I was looking through the comic, it doesn't have any graphic uh, nature to it, really, in terms of violence or um, sex or anything like that. So, um, so it, it, you know, in the story, who kind of you think is the primary demographic you kind of target in here? So, um, it's usually for ages 12 and up. Um, I usually tell people that if you are if you have a kid that is a fan of like, things like Naruto or Hunter x Hunter, those sort of things that, you know, for my alchemist, things that are like kind of, they're obviously animated, but they're not necessarily squeaky clean. They have like a bit of maturity to them. If your mm. kids are a fan of that, then, you know, this book is for you. Uh, I expect my my audience to kind of grow as the book progresses because it does get dark uh, as the story progresses. Uh, the it does get very violent. Uh, you know, a couple of f bombs, a couple of swear words here, and there, and there. Um, obviously, nothing nothing too gratuitous, but you know, it does it does. I take the subject matter presented in the story very seriously, so I tend to to grow it along those lines. So, again. You know, as a fan of these stories, like I mentioned before, the aforementioned Hunter Hunter and, and Naruto and these sort of things, mm. you know, you know, it, uh, you know how dark those things get. It's not, those are not right. like squeaky, squeaky clean stories, right? So right. I tend to think that my audience is basically people who would like those sort of shows, who is like, okay, it's, it's, it's colorful, it's bright, but, you know, when, when shit goes down, shit goes down. You know what I mean? All right. So that's basically who it is for. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I think that's very good. And the comic, the novel, um, how well have they been doing for you? Uh, successfully, you've been seeing a lot of good like fan uh, reaction to them, you know, good kind of critiques on them, reviews, things like that? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, the, the books have been moving very well. Uh, I haven't even done any major marketing for them because, like, basically when it was about to do the whole big marketing push, uh, the pandemic hit, so I wasn't able to do, like, a huge um, event about it. So I've just been quietly doing a soft launch to books, and, you know, they've sold out. I've brought in some more. They've sold out. Oh, brought nice. in some more. They've sold out. So they're, mo- they're moving right now. People who are reading them are, are giving me feedback on them. Um, what's always usually shocking when it comes to this book is, I, I always mention it, and um, people that I've never met are like, yo, I, I know Offset. And I'm like, yeah, I wrote that. And they're like, 
Are you serious? And they, they usually react like very positively to it, even though I've never met them. And they said, I'm never aware of how much people have actually read my book um, until like you know, I, I get to meet them or I, I, I'm in a similar, you know, a similar environment, which is a very good sign. Um, my aim right now is to try to, to increase the reach and also gather the audience uh, in one place, I don't want everybody to be as scattered. That's why I kind of created the the offsets website, so that you could you know not only go there for for you know books and merchandise, but also like you know I'll treat it like a Wikipedia. You could go there to just like get some some insight on the characters and the lore, and some of the artifacts in the story. You can also get updates, you know, stuff like that. So I want to create like a hub for fans and, and people who just want to see everything offset along with uh, coordinating more on social media. But, uh, like, you know, I'm not, a, I, I'm not in control of 100% of offset in terms of like, you know, when it comes to artwork, I still want to, I still have to wait on people to become free and I don't want to like have people waiting too long. So I've gone a, li a bit quiet, but I'm still like you know, moving, still moving forward to get things get things out there but so far people have been very pleased about it um i i've i got the emotional impact that it was going for which is very very pleasing for me because um i'm a i'm an I'm a emotional oriented right here i'm a person that i like you to feel something when you consume my work um mm. so i work very hard to 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 create a certain effect. So when people, you know, give me feedback and say that, yeah, this how me feel this way or this how me, you know, that's when I think that my job is working. Even when it comes to something visually, I'm like, okay, if this gives you that impression, that means I'm doing my job, right? Um, so yeah, I think the only thing that I, I could say was a big stick up, um, not really stick up, but it's something that I can't underestimate, but I definitely, have to become more blatant about it and i i, I ended up having to, to do a, a second version of the book is um there's a lot of bajan dialect bajan being uh a colloquialism for for barbadian people of barbadian descent okay Bajans. so we have our own uh, dialect and our own slang i don't use it as much in the book i kind of do like a like a version of a uh, you know English and Caribbean patois, right? And I kind of use it dynamically. It's not as as overbearing as like some other books I've read, uh, specifically from the Caribbean. Hmm. But there's still a bit of confusion when it comes to people who are not too familiar with with Caribbean dialect. So I've decided to to add a glossary to make things easier oh. for them to read to understand. That's nice. So that you know, so that people could then be like okay this is what it means this is what it means so um the second version of the well i'm gonna, I'm gonna add it to the ebooks very soon and the second running or the, the next run of um of novels are gonna have the glossary in it already so i'm just gonna just work on that i'm also gonna put it on the website so that if you bought the book already or if you want to read it now you're gonna have access to the glossary on the website you know it's gonna be there easy to find and you know as time goes on, I'm going to annotate it and make it look, you know, very pretty and, and illustrated and whatnot. But, you know, that's that's the only thing that major criticism that, criticism that I've had. And I've taken it very seriously because I want as many people to read the book as possible. And I don't want to add any um, friction to anyone who wants to get into the offset and wants to see what the story and the characters are about. So, hmm. Yeah. So where can people pick up your book? Buy it. Uh, 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 right now you can get it if you go on our website uh, offsetseries.com that's O-F-F C-T uh, S-E-R-I-E-S dot com you can go and go, you can get the ebook um, the physical book hard copy and paperback you also get the volume uh, PDF and also hard copy on that site a one, one stop shop um, so you can get on there uh, if I'm trying to get it into comic book shops as well, that's another thing I want to I want to get done as as um, I've been in contact with a couple of comic book stores, but I haven't solidified any deals as yet. So I gotta like um, you know when 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 that when those things solidify and, and and work out, then I'll put you know I'll make a note small social media. But I've been in contact with a number of comic book stores who are interested. I just have to 
you know, that, get that organized and get that, get that out there. So hopefully there'll be a comic book stores near you. Uh, uh, for anybody who may be in Barbados, you can get them from a myriad of bookstores down here. Uh, you know, if you follow social media, you'll find them. But if you're if you're uh, overseas, then yeah, the website websiteseries.com is the best place to get it. Uh, mm-hmm. Comicsology also has issue one. Oh, nice. Uh, if you want, if you want to check issue one of uh, Offset, you could get it on Comicsology, uh, and I think that's the only way you can find it. I think Indie Planet also has issue one, but you know, if, if you I would really, really, probably makes more sense to just get, you know, the full thing one time because issue one has a pretty nasty cliffhanger, so I don't know if you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, um, um, you know, I just send it to that. I think it's probably best to get the volume one then, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're finding it. Okay. Yeah, very good news. Um, so, yeah. um, so, I guess my, kind of my last question here um, would mm-hmm. be, so, you know, kind of the process of, like you said, of writing and everything like that. Um, and you said kind of it, it being kind of a good long journey and everything like that, and the cathartic feeling of finally releasing your book. Um, so did you have any struggle of people getting to read your stuff or ever like finishing your stuff, procrastinating, trying to finish it all and people trying to get people to, to actually look over your manuscripts and things of that nature? And how did you kind of deal with that? Also? Um... Well, the thing is, I always had interest regarding the book because when I when I first started um, the offset out there, I put up characters, right? Because I, like I said before, I'm a huge fan of artwork. Um, as a gift to myself, I usually seek out artists that I think are cool, and I'm like, "Yo, uh, could you draw my character or draw my you know do a commission?" And you know, because I I get such enjoyment from that, I just used to put it on social media, and then people, you know, people follow up with the characters that way, right? So when I found, when I told them that a comic was coming out and it, they saw images from the comic, then there was already interest generated from that. Um, as it relates to the book, book, books are a little harder, um, even though there are audiences who prefer to read a book than a comic. And it's been kind of interesting seeing that because they're like, oh, I prefer to read a book. Uh, you know, comics are, they just want to get a big chunk of the story one time. And that hasn't been... Like I, I had proofreaders before when I was doing the manuscript. Um, the person who helped come up with the idea with me, with my, my best friend, uh, I used to give him excerpts to read our ideas about where the story is going, and even he's be like floored by how far we took the story. Because when it started, we were just playing around, right? It wasn't nothing that we were taking seriously. It was just something we was doing as a job. So as the story progressed and it evolved over time, with as many influences that that built upon it based on what I was consuming and what I was, my taste was becoming more refined, then he, he, he I just bounced off ideas off of him and he was like being, you know, super excited. So I had him, I had um, other people who were close to me, who who weren't even that close, that basically were like, hey, I like books. I'm like, cool, we can read my manuscript. And I, I, I got some feedback. When I first started, they, I got some, some very, like, I wouldn't say it was cruel, it was a negative criticism, but it was done in a very, I think it's one, some of the best feedback I ever received. Where she, where she, she read the book and she was like saying, I can tell you don't read books that much. And I was like, how do you know? And she says, I could tell, just based on the writing stuff. And I, I, I was like, huh, she's right. Cause I used to read books um, for school. I did English, English literature uh, in, in, you know, as a part of my curriculum, right? Mm. Um, but I didn't read for recreation at that time and I took our advice and you know when I, when I tend to do things I do things in a very deep dive sort of way so you know I didn't, I didn't just read a book I read like a hundred wow. <laughs> um, you know, v- various 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 different um, genres and offers and I, I eventually got my own writing stuff from that and it was a very 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 pivotal advice because when I you know years later when I when I you know I read um, Stephen King's book on writing fantastic book where he was talking about his journey he was saying what one quote that he says that it stuck out to me he said that there's there's no way you could become a good writer if you don't read when i heard that i was like whoa that's that's whoa so that that of what she gave me way 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 before i actually read stephen king's book i was like dying that was actually very helpful our voice because just just from reading as much as i did i ended up becoming a lot better at storytelling uh, you know became more confident in my writing style and my voice and I think that that's, that's something that was very, very helpful. 
and you know helping getting even more proofreaders and people who are like interested in reading the book because it became more enjoyable to read. Um, with regards to the comic, though, um, not, not the comic. With regards to the book, I mentioned before that people were people were were book mostly because to of the cover. Like I like I mentioned before, I I put a lot of effort into coming up with the the book design because I myself like I can tell you before I I was more a fan of films and anime and that sort of stuff that was my wheelhouse and it was only till I got access and I I started to read comics that changed my outlook on the medium and books that changed my outlook on the medium that I was like all right this is actually possible with these things they're not as boring as I thought they were when I was younger, right? Mm. And, you know, when I was making a comic, uh, when I was making books, I always tell myself that if I'm doing this, I want it to look like X and Y. Um, so because of that, because they're able to see like the novel and the artwork and whatnot, the covers, I grab, I grab it. So when people see it, they're immediately pick it up. They immediately like, want to look through it and see what it's about. Um, and it's, there's not many books that look like this um, in the region. I actually won um, um, an Addy Award from the Caribbean Advertising Federation uh, for both the novel and the comic. Oh, congratulations. Um, based on the book design. Thanks, thanks. So, you know, I, 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 I worked very hard in making sure those books kind of competed on the shelf. Because I myself, you know, I like seeing like novels. I like, I like seeing the way they look. They appeal to me. You know, whenever I see... Um, like the books for Sword Art Online, ReZero, those sort of books that are kind of popping now. Like when I see them, I'm like, dang, is this, if, I, if I do a book, I want it to look like that, right? Um, the book that actually changed my mind on, on what books could look like visually um, before even t- taking them up was um, the Vampire to be novels that I mentioned. So when I saw that, I was like, if I'm doing, a, if I'm going to do a book, I want it to do, I want it to look like Vampire to be in terms of what he, what, um, Yoshitaka Emano, I think that's the artist's name. What he did for that series, I was like, okay, I want I want Offset to have that sort of visual flair, even though it's a novel, right? Right. And the result of that is that when people see the book, they're like, yeah, I want to know what this is about. I want to I want to read it. I want to you know. So they usually start it, and oh, they usually give me feedback on it when it's done written. Um, I think um. Right now, what's kind of working against me is because issue two is not sorry, book two isn't as strict as yet. People are like clamoring as to what's gonna happen. I'm like, okay, let me just. <laughs> I gotta wait on the artists. It's gonna be good. They don't wanna. They don't wanna read any like previews or anything. They wanna read the actual books. So I guess that's been more of my problem. Just trying to get books out fast enough to meet like audience interests. But you know, I don't wanna. I don't wanna rush um, the artists because they wanted to do like you know the best job they could do. So. You know, as soon as they become free and can work on everything, and you know, I'll start to fit out that demand. Mm. Yeah. Um, is there anything kind of last things you kind of want to say about your comic, about yourself, or like that? And just let and give people your links and everything like that, where people can buy your book and find you and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I, I never really got much to say about myself, that sort of it. But like I mentioned before, if if you are a fan of like. Um, if you like martial, if you like action, if you like, you know, things like Naruto and, and Fullmetal Alchemist, those sort of things, if you like crime drama, there are even things like Harry Potter, definitely, and you want to see something that looks familiar, but it's in a totally different setting, has totally different, um, influences from what you would call the norm, then yeah, check out Offset, I think you would definitely dig it, it has a lot of action, a lot of fantastical creatures and uh, yeah it's a pretty pretty fun read um, from what people have told me <laughs> um, <laughs> you can get it on uh, again my website is offset so www.offsetseries.com that's O-F-F-S-E-T-S-E-R-I-E-S dot com you can go there um, you can also find me on um, on Instagram at Offset Comic. Uh, I'm on Patreon. If you go on patreon.com, you can see, well, I don't know if this, this is quite inverted, but it's patreon.com slash offset. I have a Patreon there if you want to, you know, offer some support and get some behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm also on Twitter as Offset Bimshare. That's O F F S E T 
B I M S H I R E. I'm there. I'm there. I'm on Facebook at Offset Series as well. And um, if you want to check out um, the artist who does the comic, he does his Instagram is Art of the Cub. Um, that's Art of the C U B Cub. Mm. That's his um that's his handle. He's also on Twitch. He streams sometimes as well. And um, also the group that we I mentioned the comic group that we uh, are part of uh, beyondpublishing.com sorry Beyond Publishing Caribbean sorry they are um, the group that I'm part of so if you want to check out their stuff on Instagram you can, you can check that out that's beyond B-E-Y-O-N-D publishing Caribbean all one word on mm-hmm. Instagram so go check us out so um, yeah that's that's basically it <laughs> Okay, it's great stuff. And all those links we'll provide in the description below. Um, I post this to YouTube, all the description, all the links, everything like that will be posted there. So no worries there. We're going to be doing all that. Um, has uh, Offset, yes. part of Migos, has he shouted out your comic yet or no? Uh, no, but I, I get that joke all the time. Um, actually, it's kind of funny. When it came over near Offset, so Offset is actually a part of Beijing slang. Okay. Um, so... Basically, it means like when something, when somebody like upsets your day, or like pisses you off, you say you say Chad, I'm having an offset boy, or that Chad is my offset me. You know what I mean? So okay. that that's that's where the term came from. Cause back when it was trying to come up with a name for the series, I took it way too seriously. I, I had a lot of these generic names, and basically at the time bleach was not coming out and i could not figure out why bleach was called bleach i was like why is bleach named bleach <laughs> and it was like i was like you know i was like you know what these japanese men they, they don't care they don't they really don't give a give a shit about <laughs> about what these, where these things are named so i said like if i have a name for this series i i would call i'm gonna call it something Beijing. i want i want something that we hear about it is like all right this is this is like basically Beijing. So I said, hmm, well, Offset is, was a big slime back then. So I said, yeah, Offset. And, you know, it kind of fit into the story and the themes of the story. And, you know, when it came out to the branding and everything, you know, everything, you know, kind of fell into place. However, uh, you know, a couple of years later, the Migos became a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, you know, Offset became part of me. It was part of Migos. So obviously he blew up. Um, and I get that joke a lot. I actually think it's kind of endearing. Uh, hopefully, he reads the series one day and mm-hmm. likes it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have a contact to me as yet. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe soon enough. Maybe he'll come with a copyright strike or something like that. Claim. You know what I mean? But that that would be awesome. I, I pro- I'll probably have a direct him to. I hope we get to a point where we where we have a um a Wikipedia disambiguation post where it has like you know offset, but it means the comic or the artist or. <laughs> TV series I want to, I want to get to that point so so awesome. hopefully <laughs> yeah good stuff um so good yeah. people yeah I enjoyed interviewing here at Delvin Howe uh very good guest yeah, talk to me um yeah so it's great having him on uh read his comic uh, I'm gonna post all the links to it uh in the description below also the artist as well um give his links below we're gonna be doing that um so good people hey um you can find us on all the good socials uh Instagram Twitter uh also Facebook TikTok, all the afternoon tune. You can find us there. We also wherever you listen to podcasts. So this uh, interview is going to be up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. Um, make sure to give a five star review when you are up on Apple Podcasts. It helps out the podcast a lot. Also going to be posting this to YouTube. YouTube, we're going to just type in the afternoon tune and blue right there, giving other interviews to other uh, creators, artists, writers, things of that nature. Going to get interviews there. Uh, we're also streaming on Twitch, streaming on twitch.tv slash the afternoon tune. You can check us out there, streaming uh, every Friday, Saturday um, from 7 30 p.m., 9 p.m., uh, or 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. There, Fridays or Saturdays, um, both days of the week. Um, hey, thank you again, man, for being on. I know we tried to do a bunch of times we scheduling and all that stuff, so I'm finally glad you were able to come on, man, and I had you on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate the invite. And yeah, uh, also show you how. Uh, we actually checking out some episodes, and you guys are funny, man. I, I, dig, I dig the, the uh, content a lot. Um, so hopefully, you know, I'll have more content in the future. I like to come back on at some point. So. Oh yeah. sure. I mean, since you're an anime guy, you love anime. We were planning on doing. I don't know if you care about the live action Cowboy Bebop series at all, but we're gonna plan on reviewing that. Um, nice, nice. And I, 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 
I'm a big fan of Koei. Like, I, like, I love Shinshiro Watanabe. He's, he's, he's one of my favorite creators. Um, I'm really cautious, man, but the opening, the opening has me a bit, a bit happy. They're actually respecting the source material, so, you know, okay. it, it, it's... I, I can only give uh, my cautious support that they do the, they do the good job. Uh, I don't want to be, like, this other guy that just, like, oh, my, they're going to do a bad... I don't want to, like, feed the meme. <laughs> right. But, you know... The opening, the opening for it looks really cool, man. I, I, I definitely will give it a, a check out. Okay. So, yeah, we'll do a review for that. And then we're also going to do, like, a retrospective uh, review of the Cowboy Be By anime series as well before in preparation for it. So if you want to come on for both those things, we would love to have you on and love to talk about talk about some anime, man. Sure, man. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I definitely do do have another watch of Cowboy Call, Be uh, at some point, especially the movie. Um which I you know I, I don't know if you know I used to make um anime music videos at one point. Uh, oh, I was an a- AMV editor, and that movie um, knocking on heaven's door that was like the go to anime movie to to do a video on. That was so such a big pop culture phenomenon. Mm. So yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting Bebop again, man. That's classic right there. You're, you're in for a ride for sure. Definitely watch uh, if you want to see some really good Sakuga. Oh my gosh, yeah, watch. <laughs> Watch that series and a movie, man. You're gonna, you're gonna be blown away. Yeah, awesome stuff. So yeah, hopefully to have you back on, man. Um, so hey, thank you to all the people watching, and don't forget to always stay tuned.